Andy Kellett asks, is there a natural phenomenon you want to experience that you have not yet experienced? <clears throat> the, the first thing that comes to my mind is the Aurora Borealis. I've never seen the Aurora Borealis. Uh, my friend Eric Chang uh, a few years ago went and spent all night in freezing cold getting time lapses with 5D Mark IIs, Mark Threes. Yeah, it was so cold. He said it took 15 minutes for the LCD screen to refresh. So basically, like once he started his time lapse, he was just hoping that after, you know, a dozen hours, he would get a time lapse. And oh man, the time lapses he got, we can link to them uh, below, uh, are so amazing. I, I did once uh, in Cape Cod when I was about 17 or so, there was a, a, a phenomenon across the sky that wasn't the aurora borealis, but it was some type of ionization, and it was remarkable. Um, speaking of that, I have also never been in the full path of an eclipse occlusion. Is that what you say? An, a, a full eclipse. I know there was one recently, and we got a partial here in San Francisco, but everyone I knew who had traveled to a place that got to experience the full darkness of a complete eclipse said it was altering. That like on an evolutionary level, their body felt something they had never felt before. And that sounds really remarkable to me. We have one coming up in the next few years and I plan to be in the path of that one because it's traveling like, it's traveling across a good portion of the United States. We're, we're very lucky in that regard. So I will be part of that one. That, that's, I'm looking forward to that. Um, <clears throat> oh, ro wow. I guess they're starting a boat race out front. Uh, Robot Fencer asks, Adam, I 3D print and paint miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons, and I hesitate about whether I'm a maker. I don't do design. How involved do you have to be in the making of, the, of an object to be a maker? I feel like this is a test question because, I mean, if you know me, you know my answer is you are a maker, Robot Fencer. You're painting, you're bringing that object to life uh, with your mind and with your time. You are putting something into the world that didn't exist. Sure, somebody else designed it and a million other people could print it, but none of them are going to paint it quite like you. You are painting it for you. You're painting it for your needs. That is a maker. I, you're never going to find any gatekeeping from me on this front. And I don't think there should be. Early on and when 3D printing was first ascending, there was a lot <clears throat> of cosplayers who would think of, who would be kind of crappy about it and call 3D printing cheating. Um, and I just have no time for that crap. There's, <laughs> 3D printing, anyone who does it, will tell you it does not make things necessarily trivial or simple. It simply refines a part of the process so you can concentrate on another part of the process. But it does, there is no gatekeeping here. So you are a maker, full stop. Coding is making, dressmaking is making. If you make clothes from patterns, you are still making. You are still taking your drive and using your time to put something into the world that didn't exist. You're a poet, you are a maker. You're a singer, you're a maker. Really, anytime you are using your point of view to bring something into the world that didn't exist, you are a maker. Um, we've got time for one more question. Well, I started five minutes late. I think I could answer two more. Yeah, great. Um, <clears throat> Shane Schellenberger says, would you ever take a space flight given the opportunity? Oh, totally. Totally, I would take a space flight. Send me in, coach. I will get in shape. I totally want to go. I I do believe that I would be an excellent citizen uh, ambassador to space, civilian ambassador to space. Um, I absolutely would love to go, um, completely. And I get I'm very excited about the future because I think it won't be long before it won't cost twenty million dollars. <laughs> Maybe it will cost uh, a few thousand dollars. Uh, and at that point, I would definitely do it. But you know, if someone offered me a slot, I would take it. That's absolutely true. Um, I recognize that there is some risk involved, but I, I, I am, I've been so lucky in my life. 
I have been able to experience some really rare and remarkable things like flying with the Blue Angels or, you know, jumping off a sinking ship, uh, flying uh, to the to the edge to the bottom of the edge of our atmosphere in a U-2 spy plane and having a high a, a, a top altitude that's classified. Um, I've gotten to meet some amazing people. I would love to add traveling into space to that itinerary. Um, because I love going to the edge of things that are known and reporting back on what I found there. Um, I, as a, as a, as a citizen of this planet, uh, that kind of storytelling is one of my favorite things to do. And it's what I spend a lot of my time doing. So yes, I would totally go to space. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects, questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.